entertainer who moved to England when my dad was 10 years old. And one of his friends, while he was growing up, was a guy named Archie Leach. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in 19, uh, shortening a long story, in 1939, uh, my dad was coming to the United States. World War II in Europe had broken out. He was on a ship that only had one movie. And it was playing in a loop. The movie was called The Women. <laughs> and uh, my father said that he was sitting in deck chairs reading books or trying to kill the time. And the, the ship was zigzagging because of a fear of Torpedo being torpedoed by German U-boats. And it took like 11 days to get to New York. And he said it. Okay, this woman is dri the voice of this woman was driving him crazy. It's <laughs> screwball comedy. And uh, there were obviously a, a number of good-looking women in this movie as well, so I'm sure that, that crossed his mind. <laughs> so he went and saw the movie, and he saw it again and again, and he said, I have to meet this woman. And when he got to New York, he sent a telegram to Cary Grant. I actually have Cary Grant's telegram in reply. And his telegram was, Carrie, I just landed in New York. I'm coming out to Los Angeles. Hope to see you. And Cary Grant sent him a reply that said, you must come and stay uh, at my house. So my dad did that, and it turned out that Carrie was at that time uh, either just starting to shoot His Girl Friday with my mother, <laughs> or, it, it, or was in production. I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure exactly about yeah. the timing. And uh, my dad told Cary Grant he had to meet this woman. And uh, Cary said, okay, I'll set up a dinner for you to meet her. And my the way my mom tells the story, that where, where she picks up the story is that she was just enthralled making a movie with Cary Grant. And uh, she was so excited when he said to her on the set one day, I'd really like to have dinner with you on Friday night. <laughs> She, she was known at that time as the bachelor girl of Hollywood. Um, she'd been active in the movies. This was uh, uh, 1940. Well, yeah, but it's her next movie after the women. So Thir like, 30, yeah. Late 39 or early yeah. 40. And she'd been, you know, active in Hollywood since 1934. And uh, so she was very, she thought maybe their little romance was blooming here. <laughs> and uh, uh, so they went, as I recall, they went to... Uh, Chasen's, and uh, she was at the table with Cary Grant when, the way she tells it, this Danish guy came over <laughs> and um, kind of thrust himself into the conversation and sat down at the table, and she learned belatedly that this was not about a date with Cary Grant, but she was being uh, set up to meet this uh, Danish guy. And um, she wasn't overly impressed at first because she was disappointed, but he was very, he was very persistent. Uh, even uh, he, he, not bragging about my dad, but he wasn't a bad-looking guy. He was a good-looking guy, but maybe not in Cary Grant. Uh, <laughs> not in that class. Okay. But after uh, uh, months of of uh, sending flowers and taking my mother out. Uh, he proposed down on his knees, uh, and uh, she accepted, and in October of 1941, they got married. With uh, Cary Grant as best man. And Cary Grant was <laughs> my father's best man. And they, uh, it, it, it's really a very moving story, you know, because uh, lives in the entertainment industry can be very rough, um, lots of success, but also lots of failures, lots of... Uh, Fortunately, not in my family, but lots of divorces, and uh, my parents um, stayed close to Cary Grant throughout uh, throughout their lives. And Cary Grant was uh, just an um, unbelievably moving speaker at, uh, at uh, the funeral for my mother. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've always been very grateful to him for the friendship that he had with my parents. And I probably should be grateful because I might not be here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess the next obvious question is, did you consider your childhood, like, normal? I mean, or did you know that your mother was this big star? Well, I, I, I think bef at the ages of one, two, and three, I thought it was normal. 
but but you uh, know, five through fifteen. Like yeah. Uh, no, I understood. Uh, you know that that uh, there was a lot of attention placed on my parents, and and it wasn't. No, it wasn't like a uh, a normal childhood. Did you go to the United studios? Yes. 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 Not not because I wanted to, but. But, you know, it's like any parent, uh, parents, many parents yeah. take their kids to see where they work, and mm -hmm. my mother worked at studios. Mm -hmm. I mean, like Gloria Swanson refused to take her children to studios. I mean, so some people, different well, people. I didn't live at the studios. Yeah. No. Um, uh, later, when my but mother... But you knew where they were going. She was going during the Oh, day. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But she used to get up real early, and, uh, you know, to making movies mm -hmm. in those days, and probably still true today, you know, she would be up at five and at the studio at six, and somebody else would drive me to the studio, so. Yeah. Um, you know, she's, you know, I mean, one of the things I've always admired about her career was in the 40s. She really perfected that working girl, career woman role, where she was, you know, spunky and strong, and yet not threatening, and that was a tightrope to walk. But she was that career girl. I think that the women, uh, the movie The Women, uh, was in a very important influence on her, um, both in terms of uh, the attend. It was really the first movie, at my understanding, that that had a pretty much an all women cast. Oh, absolutely. Written by a woman, Claire Booth Luce, and, and from then adapted by Anita Luce. I mean, it was yeah. You're the scholar. The, um, the, but the very, <laughs> the first one that, no, the first and last, I think, have absolutely no men visible in front of the camera. Yeah. Exactly. Of course, it's all about men, but that's... <laughs> <laughs> but I think that, that she found, uh, that, uh, found a, a, a path forward in terms of her career from that movie, that playing strong women. And in the movie you're going to see this afternoon, um, she's the older sister and, and, and in a lot of ways the stronger, smarter sister. And... Yeah. Um, the responsible one. Yeah. Exactly. And and so she she was clearly identified with 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 portraying career women. And then I mean, then we hit the fifties, and she's got a like a lull in the. She goes to the stage, right? I mean, yes. she's she's well, not getting the film movies she roles she wants to get. Yeah, the, the industry changed, I think, quite a bit after World War II, and um, by 1950, 51, um, she wasn't getting the opportunities that uh, that she wanted. And she did something that I think, uh, and I remember, I, 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 I was young, but I, I remember um, family discussions about the risk that my mother was going to take in going back to the stage. She had started her uh, her acting career on the stage in, in uh, uh, repertory theater in New England and eventually on Broadway. So she had a history on the stage, but you know she'd been a big star in Hollywood for a whole bunch of years, and to go back and and she did a touring company in a show, a, a comedy called Pl a Bell Book and Candle, mm -hmm. to see how whether she could still do it, and she got great reviews and she felt good about it, and that led her to um, being asked to do a musical version of the movie you're going to see tonight in the the the. The musical uh, was called Wonderful Town. Uh, the music was written by um, a guy named Leonard Bernstein. <laughs> and um, it was the show, the musical that he wrote right uh, um, uh, before, uh, I'm blanking on it, <laughs> West Side Story. And uh, anyway, my mother won the Tony Award for Best Actress in a Musical in 1953. And then that led to her getting the opportunity to play Annie Mame on Broadway. And that in turn <laughs> led to doing Annie Mame. Ah, yeah. that's I mean, such a good movie. Can you imagine I mean, anybody else? I just love that movie. Mm. And of course, then Mama Rose. I mean, it just, gypsy, she, yes. just amazing, amazing. Uh, one of the stories that she told on herself, and it was about this movie, was that uh, the, you know, the girl who plays Eileen, Janet Blair, Day two or three, she calls her in and says, "Hey, you're trying to steal this picture from me." She, Janet had never made a movie before, but she knew, you know, if I get in front of her, and then she's going to turn. And Roz says, "You know, I know all the tricks. 
you can't do this to me. <laughs> um, and she, oh, Jana says, thank you so much. You know, this is so good of you to take this interest in me. And Roz says, oh, I'm not doing it for you. I'm doing this to make a good picture. And of course, the kicker is then they become very good friends, yes. which I think is just a love. But it's her no-nonsense, but caring about the big stuff. She was an incredible woman. We didn't even get a chance to talk about her incredible philanthropy and other things through her life, but I am getting frantically waved to because we're on a very <laughs> tight schedule here. So thank you so much, Lance. I really appreciate it. Woo!